What is up everyone? I am having a super weird day today, so I'm just going to make it that little bit weirder by unboxing something really weird that I've bought on eBay. So, a really brief little overview of this particular portion of my life. Um, I own a 088 Leapfrog 48 lighting desk which supports a VGA monitor. Since I bought the desk around four years ago, I've been using a Dell 17-inch ultra-sharp monitor, which has been really great. It's a very, very clear monitor. As you guys know, I'm quite a big fan of the Dell ultra-sharps, and uh, it's been absolutely solid. But the operating system of that particular lighting desk does indeed allow for a USB touchscreen, and there are certain touchscreens that 088 seem to use with their desks and what I've been doing is sort of looking at uh, various touchscreens online and this particular one or a model that is newer than this one but kind of the equivalent they're all sort of 250 300 quid so considering the amount that I use my desk it is really really not worth it it was a stretch to buy the desk itself in the first place but Anyway, I've somehow managed to find this bonkers auction on eBay where somebody was selling a touchscreen, and I'll put the model number up on the screen right now because I can't remember it. Someone was selling one for 30 quid. So I've got this for 30 quid. Let's unbox it and see if it's even in here. So first things first, in the top of the box, which is indeed out of frame, we have a USB cable. That's a good start. We've got a VGA cable and an IEC power cable. Very nice inclusion. And we have... Oh, man! Here it is. The touchscreen itself. Okay, so there is a catch. 30 quid for a 15 inch touchscreen of any kind is a fantastic deal, but unfortunately this does not include a stand. So that is definitely a bit of a bummer because, and I'll tell you why that's a bummer, the stand for these touchscreens is really, really nice. It's got quite a low profile stand and it sits behind your lighting desk and tilts the touchscreen at a perfect little angle. I think they look really sexy, but I don't have a stand. What I may do is see if I can get a stand separately in the future because that would be super handy, but for now, it does have VESA mounts on the back, so it is VESA compatible. And uh, I do carry around a monitor arm with me in my uh, desk ex uh, accessory flight case. And sometimes, depending on what table I'm using or whatever, or where I'm plonking my lighting desk, sometimes I use a monitor arm instead of the stand anyway. So that'll be fine, but I'd say probably about eight times out of 10, I do just use the monitor on a mo normal monitor stand, so the Dell one is on its normal sort of tri kind of triangular base that it has. Anyway, here is the touchscreen, and upon sort of first look, it seems to be in relatively good condition. I, I can see what looks to be a scratch here, but I can't really tell. Uh, also, there's a little sort of blemish here, but for the most part, it is looking really, really good. So, um, the connectors appear to be behind this door, so I'll probably completely disregard this connector cover because it's all about time. Um, I take enough time to set up all of my stuff as it is, so I really don't want to be faffing with screws and plastic flaps on my monitor. The only slight bummer about this is the flight case that I have for a monitor is actually for a 19 inch monitor. So I use it as um, an accessory case for all of the stuff that goes with my lighting desk. So I've got my monitor, my keyboard, my mouse, my router, my power cable, my desk lamp, all of that stuff is in that flight case. But now I don't need a mouse anymore. Um, and obviously this is replacing the, mo the old larger monitor and the mouse, and there won't be a monitor stand in there anymore. Or well, there'll be one less monitor stand, I'll still need the face amount monitor arm. So that flight case is going to be quite a bit bigger than I actually need. So I'm going to hunt for a smaller flight case as well. But there we go, that is the bottom off, and as you guys can see, 
there are the connectors. This is a DVI monitor as well, which is really, really cool. So, I need a computer to test this thing with, and unfortunately I don't have my desk up here. My desk is in storage at the moment, and even if I did have it here, then I probably wouldn't be able to set it up in here because it is a complete beast. Although I have done in the past to do some programming before a gig, but I just don't have the space to do it at the moment. My office is completely full. So unfortunately in this video, you guys won't see the touchscreen in all of its glory connected to my lighting desk. Um, but hopefully in the future I'll do some kind of video where you'll be able to see it in action. I'm hoping over the summer to do a little bit of like a gig log montage maybe. I've said it in the past and I've never been able to pull it off so I'd love to be able to do it. But as I've spoken to you guys about this before, and I know I'm going off topic from this, uh, this touchscreen, but as I've said before a million times, I find it extremely difficult to film while I'm concentrating on other work. So when I'm in a gig, my head is just like completely filled with what I'm meant to be doing at that particular time and I find it quite a stretch to pull out the camera and start recording random things and I know a lot of people do gig logs and a lot of people have the capability to do it and you know I applaud them it's something that I'm going to try and work on but I'm just very very much head in the job at the time and I feel that if I'm faffing around with camera stuff and something goes wrong then you know, I wasn't doing my job properly. Anyway, whatever, we're just talking about random rubbish now. Okay, so I've got my gaming PC hooked up. Currently got nothing on the screen. Aha! There we go, just a little bit of a loose. Ah, look at that, folks. Boom! Oh, man. I have scored myself a working touchscreen. Come on, recycle bin. Calibration is pretty on it. I've scored myself a working touchscreen for about 30 quid, give or take. So I've got no Ethernet hooked up to this computer at the moment, but. We are laughing. I have a working touchscreen, which is awesome. Really cool. Double click is a little bit finicky, but oh, I'm getting the hang of it. Ah, drag, check that out. It's a beast, folks. It is a beast. 30 quid. Just to give you guys a little bit of a close-up angle with my professional camera skills. You guys can see that functions are indeed working and working rather well, I might add. This is fantastic. So the way that the operating system on my lighting desk is laid out, um, it's designed for use with a touchscreen. So a lot of the buttons are quite big and there's color pickers and things like that. So this is gonna be super, super handy. So I wanted to record a little extra segment at the end of this video. It's a few days later. And just after I recorded the last part of the video that you've just watched, I went onto eBay and I started looking at stands. And I knew that you could get VESA compatible monitor stands, obviously, but I didn't realize that I'd be able to find one um, as suitable as I could possibly imagine, really. This, this was a brilliant find on eBay. It was about 15 quid, which is much more expensive than a load of them. If I just wanted the generic sort of circular base with a stand that's upright and doesn't move or anything, you can get them for pennies. But this one is awesome because it moves up and down this way, but also the monitor articulates on the end of the arm. Now, because it's obviously a universal stand, it's got a little bit of a larger footprint than what would probably ship with a 15 inch monitor like this. Um, so when the stand is extended fully, the monitor is very high and it does sort of look a little bit kind of like ET, um, but for the most part, in a position like this, the monitor looks very, very good, and it looks very similar to the original stand that would have shipped with this monitor. Now, in terms of 
the uh, fixing, it was quite difficult to actually mount this monitor to the stand because the included screws, it wasn't the fault of the stand, it was actually the fault of the monitor. Now this was the length of screw that they gave me, but unfortunately the uh, threaded holes are assessed on this monitor, so there's about 3 mil of a gap before the threading starts in the monitor so I needed much longer screws luckily I found four long screws that fit and then this back plate is just plastic these four screws aren't the ones holding the monitor to the stand this is just a bit of metal uh, sorry a bit of plastic to cover the bit of metal which of course has various different holes in it for various different sizes now I'm going to show you guys something that makes this monitor ultra portable and they had pictures of the stand doing this in the auction um, on eBay or in the listing I should say it was a buy it now item so it completely sold me now all I've got to do is push the front of the monitor down and the top over and completely flatten it like that and as you guys can see the monitor can sit flat on its stand now of course it's not very usable like this unless you wanted it flat on a table for whatever reason which is very handy this is a great stand for a touchscreen but what it is good for is transportation so as you guys can see I can place the monitor in a case the stand adds an extra what I don't know three inches of bulk and then I can close up my case. Now this case is just um, a very very basic briefcase flight case from Maplins. They call it a flight case, it is totally not flight case grade whatsoever, it is pretty cheap. But it does the job. They sell these in like a Russian doll configuration, so they sell a big one, a medium one and a small one. I've got all three, I use them for different things. I was using this for my microphone collection, but I have pulled the microphone collection out to go into a different case because this case fits the monitor perfectly. Now what I've decided to do is I was carrying around, as I told you guys in the beginning of the video, I was carrying around that Dell UltraSharp in a big monitor flight case. That case was really heavy. This uh, touchscreen and this case uh, the combination of the two, it is a much lighter and a little bit smaller configuration. Well, it's a fair bit smaller, but the main thing, it's lighter, which is great. Um, so, as you guys can see, there's like a divider in this case. Um, the touchscreen doesn't sort of fill this compartment completely, but of course, this is the bottom of the case. So, if I put the touchscreen all the way down, um, it's not going to go anywhere. And to be honest, it's so weighty and so wedged in there that it's not really going to move. Um, in this side, I've got free area to keep some cables. Sorry for all of the jump cuts in this video, folks, but it is a couple of days later and I am finally ready to show you guys the end result of a little bit of, well, this has been pretty much complete luck from the very beginning. So, here is my new desk accessory flight case, which I am super pleased with because it is way lighter than my old one. Now, in the previous clip, I showed you guys how the screen, uh, the new monitor fitted into this case really nicely. But now I'm going to show you the complete works. And I am so pleased with everything that I can fit in here. So if you take a little look at what I've got, we'll start up here. This is a 25 meter five pin control cable. So this is pretty, normally I... Uh, at pretty much every gig I only use one universe. For those of you who know my lighting style, depending on power supply, um, I try to use as many generics as possible. I'm very old school, so I still have a rack of PAR 64s, PAR 56s. I really try and utilize generic lighting as much as possible. So because of the way my rigs are set up, it's surprising how little channels I use. So normally, even when I've got all of my LED kit as well. Normally one universe is fine for me. Um, and if I have a second universe that I need to run, then I can, I have an extra 25 meter control cable that I can put in another case. But nine times out of 10, one universe is fine for me, 512 channels, which will of course be carried to my um, DMX splitter via this cable from the desk and uh, normally that length is pretty much fine any longer and I'd you know get in specialized cabling anyway um, so here is the flight case and firstly on this side I have my keyboard this is 
little cheap USB keyboard that I carry around, carry around with my lighting desk. It's not really needed during gigging, it's more, you know, programming and naming stuff, but I carry it around with me anyway because it's no harm to have just sitting on top of the desk at all. Um, here on the side, I've got a space for lots of cabling, so a few things that I carry around. I've got a one meter three pin DMX cable. I always like to have one of these in my accessory case with me at front of house because if I ever turn up late or I'm in a rush or something, something prohibits me from running a dedicated DMX line. Between the jet and the sneezing, this is pretty bonkers. But anyway, um, if something prohibits me from running a dedicated DMX line, whether that's time or resources or manpower or whatever, um, then I like to have a short cable at front of house because that means that any existing line I can then patch into even if my desk is too far away from that line. So whether that's a line in, in an audio snake or whatever the case may be, I've got a one meter three pin cable here. And just in case, so that I'm prepared for all scenarios, I carry around uh, all of the adapters that would be necessary to adapt to whatever cable is there. So I've got a 3-pin male to 5-pin female, which is not used so much. I've got another 1-meter 3-pin cable, so I can create 2 meters if I need to. Um, I have got the very, very important... Uh, two five pin males to two five uh, three pin females. This is of course to adapt the two five pin outputs on the back of the leapfrog to three pin, which is very important for using these cables and running through audio snakes and things. Uh, not that I recommend running through audio snakes, but sometimes when push comes to shove, you've got to do what you've got to do. Um, here we have a kettle lead. This is the kettle lead for my desk. My desk flight case has a dog box on the back. Um, for those of you who don't know what a dog box is, I shall put a picture up on the screen now of some random thing I've found on Google with a lighting or sound desk with a dog box. Um, it's kind of pretty pointless for a lighting desk because I've only got, you know, four or five cables coming out the back of it anyway. So it's a little bit of a waste of space and it makes my case a bit bulky. But what I really like about it is I can keep my power transformer for my desk in the back. I don't have to unplug the power transformer. It just sits in the back of the flight case, which is really nice. So then all I need to do is carry around a kettle lead and I just plug this into the side of the transformer and I'm up and running. Uh, as well in this little compartment, I have a three pin DMX Terminator, as well as a backup USB stick with all of my show files on it. So I could expand this little section. There's enough space for me to put a couple of handy little bits of tape. Um, I already found another handy adapter that I can keep in there. I also need to find my gender benders and put a couple of gender benders in there because you never ever know what you're gonna be faced with. Um, but that just gives me a nice little stash of handy cabling, the kind of thing that you want in your front of house accessory box. Now then, all of that aside, because none of that is really related to um, the monitor, I am going to show you guys something pretty cool that I have done. Now, I'm just going to pull all of this out. This may look like a complete mess, but I promise it is very, very organised. So, my initial plan was to leave this plastic cover off. This is the um, unscrewable plastic cover for all of the connectors, but as you can see, I've put it back on and I have three connectors coming out the side of the monitor here. Those three are power, USB, and of course VGA. Now the power cable is totally independent. The reason for that is because I don't know where power is gonna be at front of house at any given time, so I don't wanna commit myself to taping that up in a snake with the other cables. So power is completely free with a couple of meters, so it can be plugged in wherever it needs to be plugged in. So that is there, but what is taped together is the USB lead and the VGA lead because they will always be going to the same place. There's a split of about half a meter on the end and of course we've just got a standard male VGA and of course a USB type A. That gets plugged into the back of my lighting desk which of course gives me video signal and data. So that is super easy for me to do when I turn up at a gig and I make my life even easier. I have ordered a 0.25 meter, so 
uh, super short VGA extension cable. So it's a male to female cable because uh, the particular connector, the VGA cable uh, connector, is very, very low on the board. The entire motherboard is very low. So in the case, it means that plugging in the VGA is really quite difficult because you've got to bury it down there in the foam of the flight case and then try and screw it in and line it up. It's just awkward. So I'm basically tailing the VGA and then I'll be able to just plug that in in a much more convenient location within the dog box. So very, very handy. And of course, because I had all this space back here, that's plenty of space to just stash cabling. So there it is, all stashed in. As you guys can see, it doesn't look the neatest, but it is certainly functional. The keyboard fits in there wonderfully, and this fits in here wonderfully. So I think I have not only, this has been brilliant, for under 50 quid, not only have I gained a touchscreen, which is of course the biggest feature, but I have gained a lighter and smaller desk accessory flight case. I've ditched excess equipment, you know, cabling, the mouse, all that sort of thing. And I've sped up my setup time because I have permanently attached all of this cabling to the back of the monitor. And I think this is going to be a super speedy setup. There'll be no fiddling with VGA connectors in the back of the monitor in the dark. There's nothing worse than when you're there in pretty much the pit pitch black and you know it could be a really loud atmosphere and there could be people everywhere and you're thumbling with little VGA cable connectors trying to plug it in because you should have been on stage half an hour ago so very very happy with this the only thing that I would like to carry around additionally in this case and this would make my life completely and utterly um, complete with this case. I want to carry around a few more, you know, handy bits and bobs, you know, a bit of tape and maybe a socket tester. But something that I would love to carry around is because this takes a 13 amp um, kettle lead and the desk takes one, well, this has got a 5 amp fuse in it, but you know what I mean, 13 amp plug. Um, I need two plugs and I used to carry around a six way um, extension lead in my previous case. Now what I'm hoping to do is, because this case is a lot smaller internally and I've crammed a lot more into it, I'm hoping that I can utilize some of this space to put a four-way extension lead. If I can get a four-way in there with a three meter cable, if I can cram that into this case, that'd be handy. And then a 16 amp to 13 amp adapter, 16 amp male to 13 amp female. If I can slot that in down here somewhere, um, I'll probably get it in the corner or whatever. That would be ideal because then no matter what is thrown at me, I've got it all in this case. 16 amp power, five pin DMX, three pin DMX, 13 amp power, anything that is there, I can deal with it. So that concludes this video. Sorry if it was a little bit all over the place, folks. It was one of those occasions, occasions where I had to record um, just when I got the chance here and there and uh, this it's been a particularly little busy week so I've just had to kind of fiddle with this case um, when I've had a little bit of downtime which has been quite rare so there we go it's already a little kind of pushed to close because of that cable um, but I still hope that I can get a four-way in there because that would make me a very happy man two sockets for my setup and two free sockets for chargers and whatever else I may want so Bang, new touchscreen, 30 odd quid, 15 quid for the stand, fitted into a case that I already had. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you. I'll see you in the next video.